Typee, A Peep at Polynesian Life, is a novel by Herman Melville, published in 1846, based on his own experiences and stay among the cannibalistic Typee natives on the Marquesas Islands. The narrative is a blend of adventure, ethnography, and social criticism of Western perceptions of Polynesian people. The protagonist, Tamo, and his friend Toby are sailors who jump ship from the whaler Dolly due to harsh treatment and poor conditions aboard. They seek refuge on the island of Nukuhiva in the Marquesas. Disenchanted with the oppressive life at sea, they hazard the unknowns of the island, hoping to find a better existence among the natives, despite rumors of cannibal entities dwelling inland. As they traverse the difficult terrain, they experience the lush beauty of the island, which contrasts sharply with their fears of the rumored cannibals. Eventually, they stumble upon the Taipei Valley. Initially, Toby is injured, but they continue, relying on each other and the uncertainty of their destination for support. Their arrival in the valley marks their separation. Toby leaves to seek help for Tamo's injured leg, promising to return, but Tamo never sees him again. The Taipei people, however, prove to be unexpectedly hospitable and friendly. They tend to Tamo's leg and introduce him to their communal way of life, which is free from many of the constraints he had known in Western society. The Taipei villagers live in an idyllic setting, surrounded by plentiful fruit and clear streams, seemingly devoid of strife and wary of outside influences. Their culture prioritizes collective well-being, leisure, and a deep connection to their environment. Women, like the beautiful Fiawe, who becomes an emblem of the island's allure, play a significant part in daily life, with roles that Tamo finds more liberated than those of Western women. Despite the initial hospitality, Tamo's freedom within the valley remains restricted as he recovers. He becomes increasingly aware that the Taipei may be preventing his departure. His observations afford a detailed depiction of Taipei life, including their body art, rituals, and relationships, heightening the text's exotic allure and the period's fascination with the other. As time passes, Tamo becomes increasingly integrated into the tribe's daily routine, learning their language and customs, and forming bonds with the Taipei. Yet underlying his integration is a perpetual unease about their rumored cannibalism and whether he might become a victim of it. This tension underlines much of the narrative, as Melville plays with the exotic and the threatening, reflecting prevalent colonial fears. Nevertheless, Tamo is also deeply critical of Western civilization. Through his lens, the reader critiques aspects of imperialism, religion, and industrialization. The Taipei, in their seeming innocence and sustainable lifestyle, starkly contrast with the West's environmental destruction and moral hypocrisy. As the months pass, Tamo's desire to escape battle with his growing affection for the Taipei way of life which provides him an emancipation from the materialism and strictures of his own culture. Still, the fear of becoming a victim of cannibalism and longing to return home gnaw at him, compelling him to plot his escape. His opportunity arises with the help of a fellow outsider, Marnu, who is not a member of the Tepi, but is widely respected by various tribes. Marnu's cosmopolitan nature and knowledge of multiple languages, as well as his ability to travel freely among the island communities, intrigue, and inspire Tamo. Marnu, however, warns Tamo indirectly of the dangers he faces by remaining in the valley and relays vague news of Toby, though he does not assist Tamo in escaping. Tamo later learns from Marnu that Toby, having left the valley to seek help for Tamo's injured leg, managed to return to the ship and assumed Tamo was killed by the natives, thus did not return to rescue him. This revelation galvanizes Tamo to flee. He finally escapes when an Australian whaling ship anchors nearby. An English sailor named Jimmy from this ship enters the valley. Tamo approaches Jimmy and communicates his wish to leave, but the Taipei people, particularly the chiefs, seem reluctant to let him go. The novel concludes as Tamo, with the help of Jimmy, orchestrates a complex and daring plan. He tricks the Taipei by pretending to be severely ill, requiring the intervention of the ship's doctor. The ship's crew comes to the valley under this pretense. In the ensuing confusion, Tamo manages to escape to the ship. His feelings are conflicted as he is torn between the allure of the Taipei's seductive simplicity and the reality that he never fully belonged there. Once on board the ship, Tamo departs the Marquesas, leaving behind the Taipei Valley. 
His experiences with the savages have indelibly changed him, challenging his preconceptions of civilization and savagery, and forcing him to grapple with the intersections of freedom, captivity, and the human penchant for longing for what one does not have. In Taipei, Melville critiques his own society by scrutinizing the lives of those deemed primitive by Western standards. Through the juxtaposition of Tamo's life at sea and among the Taipei, Melville contemplates the nature of freedom, the fallacies of cultural superiority, and the complexities of human desire and fear. The novel thus stands as an early critical exploration into themes that will occupy much of Melville's later work, culminating in his masterpiece, Moby Dick.